the first night he was here, his family came up to see him and they took him to the Oasis. He was sending me pictures from the Oasis and I just couldn't believe that was Texas. How right. is the architecture and the, it looked like the Mediterranean. It was just beautiful. And I launched my cake business in May of 2014. And I've been very fortunate uh, to be recognized as you know one of the top artists in the nation and to be featured on television. And we really want to bring that art locally to Dripping Springs. So I like to say we are nationally known, but locally grown. <laughs> so for the longest time, I have wanted to bring my two passions together. I wanted to bring a bakery into an antique rose garden and have just a really unique bakery and venue in a rose garden. Um, I'm in a bunch of groups. I'm, I'm in the chamber. I'm in the empower. I'm in the women in business. I'm in the Dripping Springs Women's Club. Just anything I can get involved with, not only to, for myself, you know, to, to let people know that we're here, but to help other people. Welcome to the Sold on Drip podcast, your ultimate destination for all things Dripping Springs. I am your host, Bill Cafferetta, and we are here to celebrate what makes this town the best place to live in the Texas Hill Country. It's amazing people. Join us as we sit down with local residents and business owners to hear their stories, learn why they love this community, and are proud to call it home. We will be spotlighting their businesses, find out why they choose to serve the people of Dripping Springs, and dive into the local events that bring our community together. Our finger is always on the pulse, and we will be keeping you informed about how our rapid growth and development is impacting our schools, resources, and the local real estate market. Whether you're a lifelong resident or you have just discovered Dripping Springs, you will soon know why we are all sold on drip. Thanks for joining and enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Sold on Drip podcast, and I am your host, Bill Cafferetta. On today's episode, we talk to Christy Seguin of Cakes Rock and Rosehaven Bakery and Venue. She's gonna dive into her migration from Tennessee to South Carolina to Austin and eventually Dripping Springs, get into her background in marketing, owning the largest female-owned landscaping company in Tennessee, and how she got into the cake business. Most importantly, we finally get the details on what is happening to the old Last Chance Bar and Dance Hall on 290, and what her new venue means for the wedding industry here in Dripping Springs. Chatting with Christy was a ton of fun, and we really hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Sold on Jet podcast, and I'm really excited for our guest today, Christy Seguin, uh, one of the most energetic personalities here in Dripping Springs, and uh, give her a chance to introduce herself. Well, my name is Christy Seguin. I do live in Dripping Springs. We live in Sunset Canyon South. Um, absolutely love it. We have a probably that we live in the highest point in the neighborhood, and we have a view pretty much all the way to Wimberley, which is one of the things that attracted us to the hill country, because when I moved here, I had never been to Austin. I didn't know anything about the hill country. And I just think it's so gorgeous. It is. It is. Yeah. That was going to be one of my first questions. Why dripping Springs? I mean, you moved here, um, you know, why dripping Springs, but we'll get to that. I want to hear a little bit, because I know you've kind of been all over and, and, and had some businesses in Tennessee that are of interest mm -hmm. that kind of foreshadow what you're doing now. So why don't you give us a little background? Oh, and where you were before you were here? Well, I was I was born and raised in Athens, Georgia, and I went to the University of Georgia both for my undergraduate and graduate degrees. So I'm a Good diehard knowledge. Georgia Bulldog. And then when I I finished my master's degree, I got a, an MBA in marketing and sport management, and that took me to Knoxville, Tennessee, where I took a job managing uh, fitness clubs and. I grew up on a farm and I'm the oldest child and I only have one little sister. So guess who got to do all the farm work? And so I'm really passionate about landscaping and gardening and all that stuff because I've, I've done it. We, we literally grew our own food because we were so far away from any grocery stores or anything like that. Wow. So um, when I was in Tennessee, I built a house in, in the front yard instead of just having grass, I put a rose garden in the front yard. And then people started pulling off the road and knocking on my door and asking who did my garden. And I said, I did. And then they said, could you do one for me? And sure. And that kind of just organically started into 
what ended up being the largest female owned landscaping company in East Tennessee. And I absolutely loved it. And then um, right at the end, um, I was getting ready to shut it down anyway, because there had been some issues with um, employees, some safety issues on job sites, and some some things had, had come up that had kind of, I was like, okay, I love the landscaping part of it, but I do not like the personal safety issues. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. about that time, I met Michael, uh, my husband, and we started dating. And then he was being recruited to South Carolina. So he moved to South Carolina and I was still in Tennessee. So I drove back and forth to Columbia, South Carolina um, for several months. And then he finally asked me to marry him. So I moved to South Carolina and you, I just, I had sold the landscaping company. And so when I moved to South Carolina, I decided to get into real estate. So I became a real estate agent and just absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. And I was one of the top agents in the whole area until 2008. <laughs> and then it died and it that stayed dead time. and it never came back. Completely beat my head against the wall for another couple of years trying to make it work, but it wasn't working. So I needed to find something else to do. So I fell mm -hmm. back into one of my passions, which is fitness. And I opened a personal training studio in a boxing gym called White Rock Boxing. And I had a lot of fun. I do, I do box. I do love to fight. It's fun. It's fantastic exercise. And, but I had a lot of time because most people train in the morning or after work. Mm -hmm. So during the middle of the day, I started making cakes and the cottage laws, which en enable a baker to sell from home had been passed in South Carolina in 2011. So the cake business kind of did what the landscaping business did. It grew organically. Mm -hmm. um, I was really well known because I'd been a real estate agent and my face was all around the area and I had a following. And so I just put a cake up on social media and one in particular went viral and it just kind of started everything. <laughs> and yeah. uh, what was that cake? I, it, was a, it was a horse. My niece had gotten a beautiful Palomino horse and so for her 11th birthday, for her as a gift to her, I made a giant sculpted Palomino horse. Nice. And it was the first sculpted cake of that size that I yeah. had ever made. And it went viral. It won awards. Uh, it was it was amazing. I just wasn't expecting any of that. Yeah, and, that wasn't the um, intention. I, I said, oh, you know, I really, I, I've always wanted to do the cakes, but until they had the cottage laws, it wasn't really viable right. as a right. business. Right. So um, I started doing it and it really took off. And unfortunately, my husband had um, left the career he was in and he was looking for another job, another position, and he was being recruited kind of around the country. And the house that I was living in in South Carolina, it was a wonderful lake house, but it did not have a good kitchen set up for right. cake decorating. It was Definitely, I definitely needed some more space. So I had gone out and found a space to rent and I was all excited. And I came home and I said, look, space for the case. And he said, before you finish that sentence, look at this email. And he'd gotten a phenomenal job offer to Austin, Texas. And after reading the email, I said, oh, I guess we're moving. Because <laughs> it was one of those, you know, you can't pass this up. It was just right. a tremendous opportunity. Right. And I've never been to Austin. Michael is from San Antonio. So he's a native Texas boy. As a matter of fact, his last name, our last name is Seguin, as in Seguin, Texas. He mm -hmm. is a direct descendant of Juan Seguin. So his family oh, wow. is a true old Texas family. Yeah, so they're Texas. Yeah. Texas. And, uh, but we had, when we had visited San Antonio, we had never taken the time to go outside to visit Austin. I'd mm -hmm. never seen Austin. I'd never seen Houston or Dallas, nothing. So the company wanted him to start really fast. And so he jumped in the truck and drove to Austin and he moved before I did. And when he got here. And this he was when? Found, huh? And this was when? This was in 2014. Okay. Um, so in February of 2014, he moved to Austin. And the first night he was here, his family came up to see him and they took him to the Oasis. 
So he was sending me pictures from the Oasis and I just couldn't believe that was Texas. Right. The architecture and the, it looked like the Mediterranean. It was just beautiful. And he's like, no, this is right next to Austin. And so yeah. Yeah, I, that was my first introduction to the beauty of the hill country. And um, so I finally got to come visit um, mm. about a month later. And then we picked out a house. And then we officially moved here in April of 2014. And I launched my cake business in May of 2014. And my first week I had four orders and it just took off from there. And it just grew organically the same way. Yeah. Carolina. That's the beauty of this area, um, especially like whether you're in Austin, if you're in, in Dripping Springs, is the organic growth of of small businesses and supporting small businesses and local businesses, which is really mm -hmm. important, especially here in Dripping Springs. So what um, what drew you to Dripping Springs? I know you, you said you looked at that property, but, but you know, well, you got outside of the city. What, what, what ended up getting you out first, here? When we first moved here, um, my husband needed to be near the company he was running. So we, our house was closer to Cedar Park, okay. um, but doing cakes, I quickly, started delivering cakes to Dripping Springs because that's where all the wedding venues mm. are. And I would, I would go deliver a wedding cake and I would come home and say, Michael, we've got to move out there. I just love it. And, and every time mm. I would go out there, I would come back and go, can we move? <laughs> can we move out to Dripping Springs? And he'd be like, that's too far. I can't, you know, I need to run this business. And, yeah. and uh, I said, yeah, but my business is out there. And so I started doing a lot of networking and staying out in Dripping Springs. Um, I got involved with the wedding capital of Texas, um, the Dripping Springs chamber, and I was, you know, out in Dripping Springs constantly. Well, then um, when Michael decided to retire from his former career, the first thing we did was move. And so we moved to Sunset Canyon South in Dripping Springs. And we were so lucky because the house that we got is way up on a hill and we have a tremendous sunset view. It's just gorgeous. And I mean, I just absolutely love it. I love the community. I love the how people are supportive of each other in the community and how yes, yeah absolutely. people really try to support the local Dripping Springs businesses. Yeah. So that's that's just one of the most amazing things here. And there's not a lot of canned businesses or, or, or franchise businesses. They're coming in and we know Belterra has all mm -hmm. those. But, you know, when you think of Dripping Springs, you think of local businesses, you think of mom and pop shops. And that's one of the things, that, you know, to talk about with you, with, with your business, Cakes Rock, is you guys are a local business. You're right here in Dripping mm -hmm. Springs. And, and you know, it, it seems like because you're a little bit widespread and you deliver all over the place, um, that you could be, you know, considered an Austin business, but you guys are, you guys are a Dripping Springs business and you've built your business here. Well, you know, it's really hard to find a location in Dripping Springs for mm -hmm. a business. It's, believe it or not, it's much more expensive than Austin and there's a lot less available. So my bakery location for several years was in South Austin because that's all I could find. I yep. didn't like it. I didn't like where I was. It wasn't a good situation, but it, it enabled me to be legal. <laughs> so, business um, business. Yeah. yeah. So for my dripping Springs clients, I would bring stuff home and they yeah. would come to my house and pick it up. That's know, actually, easy. that's a funny thing. The way you found out about dripping Springs from delivering your cakes out here. So actually the first time I ever came to dripping Springs, I think was, like 12 ish years ago when we first moved here um i was actually doing it was around valentine's day and i picked up some extra work doing deliveries for a florist where it was like they would do the deliveries through like 100 flowers but local florist was fulfilled uh -huh. and i got a dripping springs route and i delivered like 12 flowers through dripping springs so i'm like this place is amazing and uh -huh. I, same thing i was just out here delivering and just kind of driving through um which is pretty cool but yeah that's a good point. I mean, you said that and that's, that's kind of how I met you. Um, and, and, you know, for you guys the first time, so our quadruplets for their first birthday party, y'all did the, mm -hmm. the, the cakes and the cookies and everything. And same thing, like you baked them and we picked them up right from your house and it was easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were so cute. That was so fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of the fun parts of my job is delivering the cakes. It 
the drive is stressful because people here cannot drive. We all know that it's terrible, but the, yes. um, the wedding venues are so gorgeous. I mean, I just get to see some of the most amazing places that people don't usually get to see because the, right. they're closed unless there's an event. And so right. I get to see places that are just unbelievable that most people drive right by and don't even realize are there. That's, that's one of the things here. I don't think unless you live here and know what's going on, like daily, people don't understand is the amount of wedding venues we have in Dripping Springs throughout the Hill Country and wineries. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, when you come out here, you may as well be in Northern California when you look at mm -hmm. the wineries we have and the events. And there's people that come from all over Texas and all over yes. the Southwest to have to hold events and have weddings here, here in Dripping Springs. Mm -hmm. In fact, about half at least half of our wedding cakes are for destination weddings. They're for people coming in mostly from Houston, but from um, a lot of other places, but a lot of Houston people come up here because it's a, you've got the scenery and it's not as humid. Yeah. A, a humid wedding is not a enjoyable <laughs> wedding. I've learned that one from experience. Um, so that is a good segue to, um, events and event spaces. So one of the questions we've seen a lot around town is what happened to the dance hall? What's going on there? What happened? Where did it go? What's going on? And, you know, as we know, last chance um, bar and dance hall is no more. And I will give you the floor on that one to give us a little bit of what your new project is and, and how you're going to be the new hotspot in Dripping Springs. Well, I am the one who took over the former Last Chance Bar and Dance Hall. And it was before then, it was the Highway 290 West Club, mm -hmm. I believe. It was the Little Wheel Restaurant. And in its past, it, the original part of the building was actually built in the 1860s on Fitzhugh Road. And it's beautiful. The hardwood floors are original. The ceilings are original. It's just gorgeous. But it was moved several times. And so at one point, it was moved down the street here. And the county line ran through the middle. And there's a dotted line on the ceiling because Hayes County was dry. Yep. So you could drink on the left side of the dotted line, but not on the right side of the really? dotted line because that was Hayes County. And, I did not. Know. I knew. Know, I knew that the line went there, but I didn't realize it went straight through the building. Yep, that's why it's there. So we we are going to be painting the ceiling and do and you know we're we're completely remodeling. We're 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 taking this from a dark honky tonk bar into a beautiful light, bright, white, elegant venue. So I'm going to be repainting the ceiling, but I'm going to put the dotted line back up. I love that. <laughs> I got to keep that. It's that's a, just too yeah, cool. You gotta, it's a nod to history. <laughs> So idea. when they moved it to this location, they added several rooms and it was kind of done in an eclectic haphazard way. Um, but the whole building is 6,600 square feet and it's got a huge dance hall in the back. And then it's got a smaller space. It's kind of in an L shape. So the front of it is going to be our bakery. And then there's a small event venue that's right behind where the retail bakery is going to be. And then on the right hand side, we're going to have a flex space in the middle. We're going to be teaching classes like cake and cupcake and cookie classes. I'm going to be bringing in other instructors to teach other types of classes like Jen of um, the succulents. She teaches how to do the succulent gardens and I'm going to have florists teaching things. And so I'm going to bring in other artisans to, to teach here as well. And then behind that is the big dance hall. And it has five garage doors that open up onto a fabulous outdoor area. Well, it's going to be fabulous. It was not fabulous. It needed <laughs> a lot of work. But Maybe, remember, uh, that, I used to gosh. have a landscaping company. Yep. And my specialty is antique roses. And so for the longest time, I have wanted to bring my two passions together. I wanted to bring a bakery into an antique rose garden and have just a really unique bakery and venue in a rose garden because uh, antique roses are native to Central Texas. Central Texas is where the antique rose revolution started. And some of them have names like Highway 290 Pink Buttons because it no was way. discovered along Highway 290. And there's one called Caldwell Pink because it was discovered in Caldwell, Texas. And so these are truly native central Texas plants. And 
I really want to create an amazing surrounding for the building. And that way the events can flow inside yep. and out. And they have access not only to, you know, of course, air conditioning, which is super important, <laughs> and uh, the climate control, but also to be able to flow outside to enjoy the gardens as well. And the name of the venue? It's called Rose Haven Bakery and Event Venue. And Rose is obviously for the antique roses. Haven is the name of my only niece, my precious niece. And I think that the name Haven evokes a sense of an escape, a tranquil place, a utopia. And so this is kind of an escape and a utopia of roses. So that's why I chose the name Rose Haven. I love that. And, and the, the idea behind it too, and, and you, you were very specific on this, when we spoke a week or two ago about this is not a wedding venue. No, no. Um, for several reasons. One is there's nowhere for people to get ready. A, a true wedding venue has suites where they can do all the hair and makeup and the grooms can get ready. And there's none of that here. This is just a big old honky tonk bar. Um, the other thing is I do wedding cake and all the venues out here are my clients. And I don't want to step on their toes. I don't want to be competition for them. Where we have a problem is there's plenty of wedding venues, but there's nowhere to have the events leading up to the weddings. There's nowhere to have the showers. There's nowhere to have, especially the rehearsal dinners. Mm -hmm. All of my wedding planner friends have big challenges finding a place to do the rehearsal dinner because in the past, traditionally, it was done at the venue the night before. Well, most of the venues have weddings now Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, oh, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. So if your wedding, say, on a Saturday, someone else is getting married on Friday night. So you don't have access to that venue. And, and we can't stress that enough, like how many weddings there are and how much this influences the economy of this town. I mean, you look at the Holiday Inn in Dripping Springs is booked solid six months. Mm -hmm. in advance. There's still um, not enough lodging. No, I mean, you look at that, you look at that building and for a holiday inn, it's like almost $300 a room a night. It's actually, I was trying to book something in Austin a couple months ago and I was looking and it's actually the second highest priced IHG hotel in the entire Austin Metro is the mm -hmm. holiday inn in Dripping Springs because of the amount of weddings that happen in this town. I'm not surprised because when I was looking, I looked out here for two years uh, over two years. Yeah, about two and a half to three years before I found this space. Mm -hmm. And it's much more expensive out here to rent a space than Austin. And once you get west of Oak Hill, there is no sewer. And when you yep. have a food business, you have to have a grease trap. Well, a grease trap on a septic system is a whole different animal. And right. so that's why there's so limited places out here where you can have a food business Yes, is because of the, uh, the septic and grease trap issue. Yeah. And you, that's why if you do see it, it's new construction. So, well, it's exciting. And I know the ability for you to do everything leading up to the wedding is going to be filling a big need out here in the area. And the actual capacity of your building is that kind of blew me away too. I wasn't expecting it to be as large as it was and be able to fit as many people. I can't hear, I, they are power washing out here and I cannot hear a word you're saying. I am so I just, sorry. Can you that, yell at me? This is what happens when you're, when you're building the new facility there. I'm in um, the middle of a construction zone right, right here. I'm sorry. Zone. You can't, I can't hear it on this end. But I just said that the, the capacity of the building, it's actually a bigger building, much bigger building than anticipated and the amount of people, you can have large events there. Well, the capacity as a bar was over a thousand people, but that's standing room only. Our big event center in the back will sit probably, I'm thinking around 150. I haven't officially done all the math and that depends on what size tables you use. I mean, that you know, so I'd say between 120 and 175 is a good sweet spot back there. Then plus you can flow the, the courtyard, the veranda is called the antique rose veranda is 1200 square feet on its own. So it's pretty large. And then the small venue, the tea rose room, it's going to seat at least 30, possibly 40. Again, it depends on how you arrange the tables and everything. And it also flows onto the antique rose veranda. So it's perfect for the smaller events, the 
bridal showers, bridesmaids luncheons, uh, birthday parties, uh, baby showers, you know, those smaller events that you don't need the, the huge hall for. And it's also going to be really well equipped audiovisual for, mm -hmm. for slideshows and video and, and mm -hmm. that as well. Yeah, we've got, um, so we, we've already are installing state of the art speakers and all that throughout um, televisions so that people can do slideshows, they can do business presentations. We're going to be hosting business groups in here as well. Um, the first event I have booked is actually a prom for special needs children. Oh, so cool. uh, excited about that. And um, so we can we can do school events. We can do community events. I'm planning to do some things like pop up like artisan markets. Um, I also one of my huge, huge causes that I support is um, pets, pet adoption. And I'm going to be having pet adoption events here as well. We're going to have puppies outside and kittens inside and things like that. So that uh, I want to support the local uh, rescue organizations and give them a place to, you know, have the community come in and have events like that as well. It's You're going to probably have a, a good handful of puppies that get adopted with the new <laughs> I hope so. And, you know, Cakes Rock, by the way, Cakes Rock still exists. Um, yep. We moved Cakes Rock in here. The difference now is going to be that Cakes Rock is going to be our specialty custom cake division. Mm -hmm. So the crazy birthday cakes, the corporate cakes, all those things, those are all Cakes Rock. And that's still in here. Uh, Rose Haven is going to be focusing on weddings. So the wedding cakes, the uh, the wedding desserts, and all that will be the Rose Haven. Got it. Part of it. So we're rebranding the wedding side of the business, and all the crazy sculpted, wild gravity defying cakes, and all that stuff that we do will still be Cakes Rock. Got it. That makes sense, and and, and that that's ties right into you know your involvement with the 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 wedding showcase here in town, and that we mm -hmm. that, that just passed, but you know leading yes. into next. I was actually on the committee to uh, that created that, and a lot of a lot of that was my idea because when you are a venue, a wedding venue, just going to one of these like the big bridal extravaganza they have and having a booth that doesn't help you. People have to get on site and see your venue. They have yeah. to experience the venue. So the extravaganza was not helping our wedding venues out here in Dripping Springs. So my vision was to have the other vendors do an extravaganza type of thing, which we call the showcase. And then we combine it with an area wide venue open house. And that way, all the venues get all the people on one day, they can just be open on one day and anybody can come tour the venue. And it's easier on the couples that are looking for the venues because they don't have to make all those appointments they can just pick five or six and go in one day which right. they'd never be able to do if they were trying to do it appointment by appointment so it's mm -hmm. it's been tremendously successful it's been a wonderful uh, showcase and we do it twice a year uh right at the end of january and again in the summer it sounds like you kind of tied in your real estate background on an open house tour but applied it to weddings so to make it beneficial for everybody the there. marketing market as a real estate agent and marketing as a small business, um, even, you know, for cakes, it's, it's the same. Um, it's very much creating relationships. It's getting to know people locally. It's getting involved in the community. Um, I'm in a bunch of groups. I'm, I'm in the chamber. I'm in the empower. I'm in the women in business. I'm in the dripping Springs women's club, um, the wedding capital of Texas, just anything I can get involved with, not only to, to, you know, but for myself, you know, to, to let people know that we're here, but to help other people. Um, you know, part of the whole philosophy of networking is you give referrals. Yeah. So yeah. if you can Absolutely. help other businesses, they are going to be more likely to help you, especially if they know you personally and you have a relationship. I mean, anything small business in a town like Dripping Springs is about relationships. That's the beauty of this town. That's what we love about the people here. And that's why I wanted you to be on this to kind of share your story and explain 
where you're coming from and how you run your business, because that's important as well. And that's the kind of business that people here mm -hmm. in Drip want to support and, and why we are who we are and, and what makes us so special. Well, um, I have been very fortunate since I moved out here. I was able to compete on Halloween Wars on the Food Network. That's right. Um, That's right. That was that was my goal. That was one of my bucket list items because the Food Network is the ultimate, and yep. Halloween is my favorite. I've always joked I my soul is black. I love Halloween. Uh, I've always been a big Halloween like my person. Four year old Zoe is obsessed with the Nightmare Before Christmas and Jack Skellington and. One of oh the, yeah, one yeah. of the babies. Enzo's like first words. He runs around Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love Halloween. So Halloween Wars was just a joy. Before that, I competed on Netflix Sugar Rush, and I was on mm -hmm. the Cooking Channel. They they used to have a I don't know if they still do, but they used to have a show called Cake Hunters, and they would actually come to your town and help a you know go around to several bakeries, and that one was a fun one as well. So. Um, I've been very fortunate uh, to be recognized as you know one of the top artists in the nation and to be featured on television. And we really want to bring that art locally to Dripping Springs. So I like to say we are nationally known, but locally grown. I love that. That's a great, that's a great, <laughs> that's a great one there. Um, that's good. Um, question. So one of the other perspectives I want to get from this is for other local business owners here in Dripping Springs to be able to learn and kind of um, mix ideas. So for you, what are what are some, I mean, outside of finding a venue, you know, what are some of the hurdles you've had to overcome in these small businesses locally here? Um, and, and what did you do to kind of turn those around and make those big pivotal, ex, you know, jumps in the right direction to, to improve and push your business further? Well, I mean, the biggest hurdle was just the lack of available space. Um, if I had not known the owners of The Last Chance and they told me before they were going out of business, um, we we made the deal before the community even knew that they were shutting down or I wouldn't have gotten this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had tried to get several places in town. And like I said, believe it or not, it's really a lot more expensive out here because the part, part of it's probably the scarcity mm -hmm. of, you know, but if you, if you look at the per square foot rents, it's more out here than it is in Austin. And then you have the challenge of, you don't have the sewer, you don't have that. And then just the financing. Um, it's almost impossible to get, especially right now um, with the economy doing what it is. So fortunately, I sold a piece of property and I have capital myself to finance this or um, I wouldn't have been able to get financing on it. So what I take from that is it was all relationship building and the contacts that you had is what had kind of got you through those yeah. blocks. Well, that's how, how I met the owners of this building was I almost rented the building next door that is now oh, Taco Margarita. I was trying to get that building about three years ago, and that's how I met uh, the owners. And um, then I just thought that the last chance was a really cool place. And so my husband and I would come over here all the time and play pool. And I am a historical architecture nut. When I lived in Tennessee, I had a house built in 1840 and another one built in 1883. I've restored historical homes before. And the history of this building, I just, I was in love with the building. And so that's why they offered it to me because they knew that I would restore and enhance the building and that there was no chance I would tear it down because right. they had talked to some other people and they were going to turn it into a parking lot. They were going yeah. to, to bulldoze it. Yeah. And I was I said, no, I would never let that happen. So we are we're taking it to a whole new life. It's going to be completely different than it's ever been in the past. But there's no way I would let anything harm such a historical icon. I mean, this building has been iconic for people traveling through the hill country for 150 yeah. years. And cool. I intend to you know, make it better and brighter and even like even more of a community center than it has been. And it's really cool that you're going to be keeping that dotted line just to show yeah. that. Through. When, um, when can we expect to see the venue open? 
I'm not positive. I hope that I can have my grand opening sometime around late May to June. That's my target date. As soon as I know an exact date, I will let you know. <laughs> um, we have people, we have a few events we might host before then, but it would be people who understand that it's not perfect yet. So right. I want, I think the retail bakery is actually going to take the longest of anything to do. So I really don't want to do the full grand opening until we're ready, um, ready? for the whole thing. Well, I can't wait to see it. And I know it's going to be a huge success. Um, your energy and excitement is contagious. And I've heard you tell this story four or five times now, and you just get more excited each time. And the vision is clear. Um, you're clearly aligned in what you're going to do. And it's going to mm -hmm. be a really, really awesome event center. And it's going to be a, a, a big push um, for all these other venues to be able to have the opportunity for you to assist them in the, mm -hmm. the entire wedding experience. And, um, and you know, I just seeing the progress, I mean, just yesterday they painted the front of the building and just that made so much difference. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely. just, it's, it's miraculous what just even a coat of paint will do. And I want people to want to come here and get a cupcake or a pastry and a cup of coffee and, you know, enjoy it in the garden, enjoy it in our, you know, we're going to have the retail place in front of, and, and just make it somewhere that the community loves to come and hang out and just enjoy. Paint is miraculous and can change a lot of places. It's incredible. Of places. Um, well, great. Where can the listeners find you and how can they reach out? Well, right now our website is under construction because this place looks like a bomb went off, so I don't have any website content yet. <laughs> um, the website will be rosehavenvenue.com. It is not active yet, but you can email us at, for a cake, you can email us at weddings at rosehavenvenue.com. And for events, you can email us at events at rosehavenvenue.com. And we're on Instagram and Facebook as Rosehaven Venue. So you can reach out through those channels as well. And um, I, I will have a phone number. It's already set up through Spectrum, but I don't have a phone in here yet because it, we're just not ready. <laughs> So well, we, we will fun. eventually have a lo the local phone number as and well. Then, and you can just walk in. I mean, if, right if, in. You, if you see my crazy van out front, my van is a rolling billboard for cake. So if you see that or my black SUV with the pink license plate that says got cake, come on. Come on. Come on in. And then what about Cakes Rock? What's the, the, that handle for Instagram? Because there's some oh, great. Yeah, my, my Instagram for Cakes Rock is Cakes Rock TX. So um, you can also get get to us through that as well. And our phone number for that is um, 877-771, I'm sorry, no, 711-2253, which is cake. So it's 711 cake. 711 <laughs> cake. Well, mm -hmm. I can personally attest you do amazing work with the cakes. Um, I'll actually link um, in the in the show notes here to the kids' birthday party so they can see some of your work there. Uh, for our uh, notorious B.I.G. <laughs> notorious O.N.E. themed party we did. but That was uh, so cute. It was great. Um, but thanks so much for being on. We're so excited for what you have going on. We know that you're going to do the this building justice and actually blow it out of the water. It's going to be great. Um, I hope so. Can't wait to be at the grand opening and see the event. Well, thanks. We need all the support we can get. So um, anybody who's listening, if you have a big life event coming up, we would love to host you. We, from everything from the small, like a small shower up until, if you want to have your holiday party here, we're even going to allow people to do potluck. So we're going to be a lot more laid back than a lot of the venues that require you to use certain caterers and things like that. So we really want this to be something that the community feels that they can come and have their events and it's a comfortable, beautiful, wonderful space. And it's a piece of Texas history. Well, that's what I'm most excited for is to see how it restores and the elevation of this space. Um, so make sure you go ahead, follow Christy on Instagram um, and, and, and keep that in mind. Give us a follow. And we hope you subscribe to this podcast. Leave us a review um, on your favorite platform. You can find us at Sold on Drip or at Bill Cafferetta. 
And we're excited for you. And we hope that this helps you be sold on Drip. I sure am. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. Thank you for listening to the Sold on Drip podcast. Please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes. If you would like to connect, learn more about Dripping Springs, or have any questions regarding Central Texas real estate, you can find me at soldondrip.com or on Instagram at Bill Caffaretta. I hope to see you around town.